Rassam Brown. Treaties on the Rastafarian Movement. Ever since man has found himself the master of planet Earth, from primitive man till this time, he has always sectionally upheld some form of deification to a higher concept. Every race of man has got their own form of worship, unlike and peculiar to each other race of tribe. Gods are the creation of the inner consciousness of nations to deification of an individual. Elders and parents begat progenies who in turn carry on the perpetuation of such culture. We in this cause will give brief and concise account of the culture of Rastafari, its code of law, etc. Unlike all orders of religion, the culture of Rastafari was not handed down from father to son as the people of Christendom. We who have perused the volumes of history knew that in this 20th century, a king would arise out of Jesse's root, who should be a God almighty for his people and a liberator to all the oppressed of the earth. We, the Rastafarians, who are the true prophets of this age, the reincarnated Moseses, Joshua's, Isaiah's, Jeremiah's, who are the battle axes and weapons of war. Ah, Jida, a holy war. We are those who are destined to free not only the scattered Ethiopians, black men, but all people, animals, herbs, and all life forms. We are the vanguard of the 144,000 celestial selectees who shall in turn free 468,000 millions particularly and the world at large. We are the disciples of Rastafari who have walked with God from the time when the foundation of creation was laid through 71 bodies to behold the 72nd house of power which shall reign forever. We now stand as the fulfillers of prophecy. We knew that when a king should be crowned in the land of David's throne, that individual would be Shiloh, the anointed one, the Messiah. The Christ returned in the personification of Rastafari. On his vesture, on his thigh, is a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. See Revelation 19, verse 16. We also know the significance of Daniel declaring from that time of this time, for I, far I, beheld until all the thrones of Babylon was cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, the bearded God whose eyes were like flames of fire, the hair of whose head was like unto wool, matted hair, whose feet were like unto burning brass, black skin, and he troddeth the fierceness of the winepress of his wrath to execute justice and judgment on the Gentiles, the nations of Europe and their black allies. The scripture declare God hags in motorless spaces surrounded by thick darkness. Hence, black man, God came in many bodies to reign forever in Rastafari, the triple crowned monarch, the Holy One of Israel, whose ray of light shall finally dim the eyes of the dragon, advocates of Christendom, and through 
whose power all those of many nations who embrace the faith and uphold its laws shall live forevermore with God. We are those who shall right all wrongs and bring ease to the suffering bodies and peace to all people. World warning. The servant last veil of wrath is now uncourt, about to be poured on earth. The Rastafarians, eternal ones, possesses the key to war and peace in the universe. We, the ransomed of the fall, who knows that heaven, paradise, is the land of Ethiopia on the side of the north, who maintain divine control over all minds of men, rich and poor, great and small alike. For they are those who pass through great tribulations in Jamaica by the name Rastafari, and in other lands by different names. They are those that shall not take the beast by force of armament. If you bow before force, God and history will record your judgment. But while the world of nations struggle for power, the glut for power that men and nations seek is foreign to the policy of Rastafari. Who draw his reservoir of strength through faith and humility? Who through the fall of Zedekiah to this day has struggled to maintain our culture and dynasty through the reign of every foreign foe? The Rastafarian is he who bows the knee to God, Rastafari alone. We are those who obey strict moral and divine laws based on the mosaic tenet. Number one, we strongly object to sharp implements used in the desecration of the figure of man, e.g. trimming and shaving, tattooing of the skin, cutting of the flesh. Number two, we are basically vegetarians, making scant use of certain animal flesh yet outlawing the use of swine's flesh in any form, shellfishes, scaleless fishes, snails, etc. Number three, we worship and observe no other god but Rastafari, outlawing all other forms of pagan worship, yet respecting all believers. Number four, we love and respect the brotherhood of mankind, Yet our first love is to the sons of Ham. Number five, we disapprove and abhor, utterly hate, jealousy, envy, deceit, guile, treachery, etc. Number six, we do not agree to the pleasures of present day society and its modern evils. Number seven, we are avowed to create a world order of one brotherhood. Number eight, our duty is to extend the hand of charity to any brother in distress. Firstly, for he is of the Rastafari order. Secondly, to any human, animals, plants, etc. likewise. Number nine, we do adhere to the ancient laws of Ethiopia. Thou shalt give no thought to the aid, titles, and possessions that the enemy in his fear may seek to bestow on you. Resolution to your purpose is the love of Rastafari. Rastafari. Many thanks to Sister Barbara, Makeda, Blake, Hannah, who provided the text of this Ross Sam Brown treatise to Wise Mind Publications. Also give thanks to Ross Aya Gift who recorded the reading. <laughs>